So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video, and if you guys are following myself or Apple in the Twitter sphere or anywhere, you guys might have seen that Apple actually started to ship out these new M1 iPad Pros to all the people that pre-ordered it, or at least got the ability to pre-order it early on and be one of the first ones to pre-order. So, hopefully next week between Wednesday and Friday, I should be getting the iPad Pro. It's looking like they're going to be holding them until that Friday to ship them out to people, so, you know, the public doesn't get them until Friday. But let's see, maybe, you know, FedEx or UPS, you know, surprises us and we'll get it a little bit early. But in the meantime, we've seen in the news that there have been some Geekbench scores that have been released on this new M1 iPad Pro, and the results are pretty insane. So, that's what this video is, let's talk about it. So before we get started, I do want to make this video as concise as possible and not drag it along too much, right? So to begin with, to bring a caveat to this, I do believe, there isn't confirmation, but I do believe that the tests that we're going to see and these numbers that we're going to see are going to be talking about the 12.9 inch iPad Pro that might even have 16 gigs of RAM. Because we're thinking if Apple or the person that actually ran these tests wanted to show off the power of these iPads, these M1 iPads, they're going to choose the best one possible. So my opinion is that this is the 12.9 16 gigabyte variant. But I could be totally wrong and this could be the base model. But now let's get into it and before we actually start talking about the iPad Pro Geekbench numbers, let's get right into kind of like a base level so I can show you guys exactly what the M1 chip is doing on like the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro, the Mac Mini and things along those lines. So I'm going to pop up the numbers for the M1 scores right here on the, you know, like the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro and these are the single core scores, right? So this is going to take advantage of quick tasks, you know, like text editing, messaging, email, web surfing, kind of really quick tasks that don't require a lot of heavy usage. So that's what the single core score is for, right? And you can see that with the M1 processor, we're looking in the low 1700s, which is great, especially compared to what Intel was giving us back before the M1 was out, which is on the low thousands, right? Especially with the, you know, the i9, like the greatest and latest Intel was still nowhere near to match what the M1 was doing, at least on Mac OS and on these Mac hardware computers. And then if you transfer over to the multi-core scores, you can see that these M1 processors are pushing 7,000 plus, you know, the mid 7,000s in terms of multi-core score. And multi-core, again, is mostly for more intense tasks, right? 4K editing video, Photoshop, you know, rendering huge resolution images, having a ton of PowerPoint presentations open at the same time, because you guys want me to throw in some business stuff in there, not just creative stuff, you know, being able to have multiple LinkedIn tabs open at once. That is what, you know, the multi-core score is for. It brings in the GPU, kind of just amplifies and multiplies everything, right? So we're sitting around 7,500, 7,400, which again is great, especially compared to what Intel was giving us, because you can see that even the 16 inch Intel i9 MacBook Pro from 2019, I believe it was, is still sitting way below that MacBook Air. So now that we have that baseline, right? Those are the M1 model MacBooks, and then also comparing it to some Intel MacBooks from 2019. But if we go now to the iOS and iPadOS side, right? So I'm gonna show it right here. You can see that the most powerful single core score is coming from that A14 Bionic on the iPad Air 4 with a score of around 1600, mid 1600s, which again is creeping up to that M1 level, right? So think about that for a second. So you're only about 50 to 100 points away from being at the M1 single core level in the A14 Bionic, and that's a $600 iPad Air 4. So it's very, very powerful from a single core perspective. And it makes sense, right? Because the A14 and the M1 are so similar in architecture that from a single core perspective, it just makes sense to put the M1 in the new iPads. And also you'll get a nice, a tiny little bump. But again, we're getting closer to the M1 chip with just the A14 Bionic. And if you look towards the bottom of the list, you can actually see my config, which is that 2018 12.9 inch iPad Pro with the A12X Bionic, right? With the first one that came out. So that one's sitting at around 1150 in single core usage. And again, I'm, it's a three-year-old device and I'm still using it on a daily basis to record these videos, to edit these videos. I've never had an issue. Like I've never been in a situation with my current 2018 iPad Pro where I said, wow, I wish I had more power. But one more thing that I saw that was kind of iffy was that the A12Z chip in the 2020 iPad Pro actually sat below the 2018 iPad Pro. So I thought that was kind of weird, but teach their own, it's up there, that's what it is. So now if I put over the multi-core scores for these iOS and iPadOS devices, you can see that now the iPad Air 4 is actually at the bottom. And the reason that is is because the A14 doesn't have as many GPU cores, right? So once it gets into that multi-core performance, the multiplier isn't as high, and that's why you're only seeing about 4,000 or 4,800 for that processor from a multi-core perspective. And that's what the selling point with the iPad Air 4 was. From a quick standpoint, it's going to be the fastest thing you ever had, but if you want something a little bit more powerful, you're going to want to go with the A12X or the A12Z or the M1. Right? That's, what they're gonna, that's what the selling point was between the Air, the Air 4 and the first tier iPad Pro. The multi-core performance is just a lot better. 
So now that we have the baseline on the iOS and iPadOS devices running the A14, A12 architecture, which is again, very similar to the M1. Now let's pop up these leaks, right? So the leaks are gonna be right here. And again, my belief is that this is a 12.9 inch, 16 gigabyte iPad Pro. I could be wrong, but I do think that if somebody's going to be putting these numbers out there, they're gonna show you the latest and greatest. But again, at the same time, maybe they're showing us the baseline model to show you just how powerful even the baseline model is. But if I show you these single core scores, right, with the 2021 M1 iPad Pro, you're sitting at below 1700s for single core score usage, right? Which is right on par with the M1 MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, Mac Mini. So you're sitting in the same realm, which makes sense. But at the same time, think about how thin that is. So the thermals inside the iPad Pro can't physically be as good and it's still pushing out that power, which is amazing to see. And then if you compare it to my 2018 iPad Pro, you're looking at about a 50 to 60% increase in single core like power, right? So that's gonna be a nice little upgrade. Again, I'm never, I haven't been in a situation where I'm yearning for more power, but more power I'm not gonna say no to, right? And now to blow your minds away, let's pop up these multi-core scores for these iPad Pros, the M1 iPad Pros. So look at it, you're looking at 7200, 7300, 7400, right? So you're getting around 73, in terms of a Geekbench score with the multi-core score, right? Which is amazing, right? You're right on par with the M1 processor. You're right on par with the M1 MacBook Pro, the M1 MacBook Air, the M1 Mac Mini. You're probably gonna be on par with the new M1 iMac that's gonna be released, that's gonna come out really, really soon and probably also being shipped to people. And then you can also see if you compare this multi-core score to the multi-core score of the Intel i9 16-inch MacBook Pro, this iPad Pro is 30% like faster, stronger, better from a power perspective and a chipset perspective than the Intel one is. And that computer is like three, $4,000, which is crazy to think about. Like think about that for a second and how thin and minimal, it's a tablet guys. It's so it's 5.6 millimeters in thickness and you have all that power in that tiny chipset. It's just amazing to see what Apple can do with iPad Pro. So overall, this thing is gonna be a beast, right? This is gonna be the most powerful thing Apple's probably made, even on a baseline model, from a tablet perspective, from a computer perspective, from a computing device perspective. It's gonna be the most powerful thing Apple's released to date until they come out with you know, the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1X or the M2. And we're gonna see what Apple does there by kind of integrating more RAM. Maybe at some point, Apple will put more unified storage in there or more unified RAM and get you to 32 and 64 gigabytes, which will just make that multi-core score go through the roof, especially if it's unified like Apple wants to do it with the M1 processors. So again, I just wanted to share all that information with you guys. So expect to have this, you know, this iPad Pro be an absolute beast. I'm gonna do a lot of comparisons in real world testing, right? Ex exporting things from LumaFusion on the 2018 versus the 2021, you know, seeing how many tabs I can open in Safari on the, on the two different ones. So things along those lines, I'm gonna try to do as many real world tests as possible, compare the actual screens to see if that XDR display is enough. So definitely subscribe if you guys wanna check it out. But again, all this power is amazing, but if the software doesn't match it at WWDC on June 7th, it's all for naught. Because at the end of the day, you're gonna be doing your single tasks just a little bit faster, maybe 50% faster, but you're not gonna be able to multitask like you want to. So Apple better bring it with WWDC. But again, that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed. Let me know down below, what did you guys get? Are you guys gonna wait to see the reviews on the first batch of iPads that come out? Are you gonna wait for WWDC to see what Apple does with their iPad OS on the new iPad Pros? Let me know down below. I'm always curious to find out more in terms of what you guys are purchasing and why you're purchasing it. But don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, let's get the 25K before that new iPad Pro comes out and gets into the studio, because that'd be cool. We're pretty close to it. But until next time, peace.